Okay, we're back. This is the Dell Storage Forum, and we're live. This is The Cube. I'm Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman of Wikibon.org. SiliconANGLE is here. This is our spotlight on the customer. We're here with Bob Plankers, who's with the University of Wisconsin. Interestingly, Bob is a virtualization and cloud architect, which is you know a, a new and emerging title. Uh, you hear a lot about storage admin and sysadmin and VMware admin, and, and Bob, first of all, welcome to theCUBE. Oh, thank you very much, Dave. And um, it sounds like we're, we're witnessing the transformation of many companies. We're obviously here seeing Dell transform, but there's a transformation going on within IT in terms of people gaining new skills, and so I'm, I'm intrigued by your title of virtualization and cloud architect. What is that all about? It basically means I talk a lot about a, a lot of different things all the time. The yep. uh, um, uh, I liken it to, uh, I, th I think in, on Twitter, I call myself a hardcore IT generalist. And uh, uh, being a virtualization guy, being a cloud guy, uh, you end up being a little bit of storage, a little bit of networking, a little bit of server, little bit of, uh, and a whole lot of process, and a whole lot of uh, policy and procedure, because uh, that's really what I see the cloud as, is uh, uh, more about people than, than technology. So, you know, uh, virtualization, technology, Cloud, people, and process. So. so by the way, he's at Plankers on Twitter, so go ahead and follow him, because he has great tweets, and uh, <laughs> Bob blogs, he'll tell it, tell it like it is. Yeah, right, yeah Dave, so you know, Bob, Bob, what I love about these is, you know, we have these conversations at the conferences. Dell did a good job of bringing in a lot of the influencers, press, and analysts, uh, and when we talk about things like convergence and cloud, there's technology issues that need to be addressed, and there's big mm -hmm. companies with lots of money and smart people working on that, but it comes down to the people where we really have the trouble getting traction. So we know, especially got the storage guys are very conservative and they need to be dragged kicking and screaming towards those new technologies. Uh, we just had Pete on uh, talking yes. about how even something is, you know, we would look as simple as, you know, deploying an Equalogic storage array. Great stuff, scales out, easy to use. His users were nervous about it. So, you know, wh what are you seeing in your in your world? Uh, similar things. The, um, like you stated, it's, it's tough to get some of these folks that are traditionally very risk averse, storage admins being one of them. You know, everything is built on storage. Virtualization, you've got these giant crystal palaces built on storage. And if something goes wrong, it all comes tumbling down. They don't like being yelled at. They don't, nobody likes being yelled at. But the, uh, uh, you know, they don't like having the blame, uh, the finger pointed at them, the blame game where they're, uh, uh, they're at fault, so they're very risk averse. They uh, go for technologies that are stable and proven and straight out of the 1980s, you know, and... Uh, um, That's the old nobody ever got fired for a buying from IBM mentality, or? Yeah. You know, nobody ever get fired for coming on theCUBE either, did you Oh, know really? I, I certainly <laughs> hope not, you know, like that would be, that music to my ears. <laughs> the, uh, um, but the other thing is that, uh, well, it's, yeah, storage admins are risk adverse. A lot of people are risk adverse. Um, network admins uh, feel like they're being left out of the conversation. So the whole people side of, of cloud, you end up uh, just trying to break down some of those barriers, some of those silos that uh, have formed for years in, in institutionally around, around the, the different teams, the networking team, the, the storage team, the sysadmins. Uh, and you need to all just work together. You know, why can't we all be friends? So, so you know? Bob, an interesting comment. You said the networking guys feel left out. So, you know, yeah. we've got a bunch of friends that are at Cisco Live this week down yes. in San Diego. You know, there's been a bit of a lack of innovation in networking. I, I think until recently, it's, there's a lot of buzz, a lot there's going on. There's a lot on, of but, stuff going on. You know, on, yeah. is, is there hope for the network guys? Oh yeah, absolutely. They're very smart people, uh, you, but you need them on your team. You, you need them up with you. They need to be part of the plan. Uh, you know, virtualization sort of took them by surprise. No one was telling them about it. Well, a lot of cases, a lot of organizations had, you know, a couple of a couple of uh, servers doing uh, maybe VMware. They were trying it out, and then somebody's like, "Let's go whole hog," and and uh, uh, 
and nobody told the network guys that all of a sudden the traffic isn't going to be north south it's going to be all this crazy east west stuff and uh, um they didn't build their network to be like that and uh, so they've got to redesign things you know they're you know storage admins network admins sometimes sysadmins are like bears in the woods they don't like to be surprised you know and uh, uh, bad things happen when you surprise a bear in the woods you know you uh you surprise a network admin and uh, um, force them to change what they need to do, force them to change their whole setup, they're not going to be super happy about it. So, you know, it's about communication. It's about, you know, that sort of thing. So, so Bob, you work for the University of Wisconsin. I do. So c can you give us uh, just a little bit of flavor as to what does what does your environment look like and what are the biggest challenges that you guys are facing with your infrastructure? Uh, our infrastructure, we're on the, the path of virtualization, you know, and we're just starting to look at the cloud side of things. So, so can you quantify it from virtualization? Are you at 30%, 70%? I'd say you know, maybe about how many 50%. Apps? Uh, okay. We've got a lot of apps, and that's one of the things that we're looking at is, from, you know, the move to a private cloud yeah. is centralization, standardization, and that's something that the, uh, uh, the organization is doing right now, is uh, taking a look at all of the stuff that's been built uh, campus-wide, all the departmental file servers where we could, you know, we've got central file servers, but, you know, somebody invented a, a file server because it better or more closely met their needs at one point, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. You know, can we bring that in-house now, uh, you know, to ensure that things get backed up, data retention policies, antivirus and stuff like that. Uh, we're, we're doing a lot of work in that regard, but you know, it's a process. It, it's a long process. It's a slow process. Unwinding a lot of the stuff. There are unwritten requirements. You know, uh, unwritten performance requirements. You know, uh, that you move something into a central, centralized service, and all of a sudden it's sl it's slow. You know, the VM is slow. That's one of my favorite comments. The VM is slow. How? You know, is it quantifiable? Can we? You know, can we quantify exactly? Can you give me a number in a repeatable sense? So, you know, there's a lot of unwinding that, a lot of putting metrics on things, um, figuring out what people don't like about stuff so they're not subverting you. Uh, and yeah, we're like many other companies, many other large corporations, we're on that path, you know. So, so, so you've adopted server virtualization quite a yes. bit. Uh, yeah. On the network side, have you gone into or tested any of these fabric technologies that are yeah, out so there? Yes, our network engineers are always looking at that stuff and uh, uh, right now they're kind of positioning themselves for uh, to redesign the network in the next couple of years to accommodate new things they're trying to decide how they want to do how they want to do that how they can be flexible uh, in the future to uh, um, and rebuild the network you know not just speeds and feeds style you know like not just bump everything up from 1 gig to 10 gig and 10 gig to 40 gig but also sort of redesign things uh, that make better sense given you know, all the new technologies that are coming out. Okay, does converged infrastructure play into your, your environment at all? Uh, it does, it does. Uh, we've traditionally been a big fiber channel shop. Uh, we're starting to look at iSCSI, oh my goodness, you know, like scary iSCSI, you know. We, uh, it's been around for what, 15 years or longer than that yeah, probably. Well, the the standards were done in 2002, in 2002 but the technology was, was you know, It's a late pretty 90s. well known thing, so 10 Absolutely. years, 2002. Yeah, I mean, as we've talked, as, as a networking person, you, you, you know how it works. Yes. And, and yeah. from a storage standpoint, there was mm -hmm. more of that political friction yep. once again. But, uh, you know, again, the, the data, the networking guys, their network has never really been used for storage. Right. So the way they handle the network, the way they do maintenance, the way they treat everything, has to change just a little bit. And uh, uh, in order just, to- just, just give them their own network for storage and they can have the quality of service and that's what they need. Yes, yes, but somebody's still got to maintain it, keep, yes. keep the switches up to date and that, and that'll probably be the network yeah. guys. Well, what, can you and give us a little, what's, what's the size of the staff and the, how many guys do you have working on storage and network and so do, storage, do they just throw stones at each other? Or? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, We've moved on to more advanced weapons and stones, but <laughs> the uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I joke. The uh, uh, the guys I work with are, are wonderful. Uh, the storage guys, uh, the way we're set up is that um, there isn't a, a true storage guy. There's, you know, there's a the lead storage guy. I'm the lead virtualization guy. You know, and then we have teams that work with us. But these teams are maybe half time people. Uh, most of my team is like. A, half Windows guy, half virtualization guy, that sort of thing. So we probably have four full-time employees total working on storage, 
uh, for full-time employees' worth of time. I mean, uh, working on virtualization and stuff like that. Uh, I'm the only guy that's full-time virtualization. Uh, and like I said before, full-time talking about clouds and you know what is the cloud and all that stuff. So and all the other guys are actually doing all the work. So, so you're predominantly a, a, a Dell shop, is that right? Or We're predominantly a Dell shop. Running yeah. a lot of Windows apps? A lot um, of Windows apps, a lot of Linux and okay. stuff like that. Yeah. Educational environments tend to be more Linux friendly and, yeah. and things like that. So um, in our virtualization environments, uh, our main ones, uh, we're about 50-50 Windows, Linux. And, and the storage like is what? Storage is all over the place. We've got EMC, we've got NetApp, we've got Dell Compellent, we've got Dell Equalogic, we've got, um, well, I suppose they're EMC Isilon uh, storage. So uh, some of it's coming, some of it's going. Uh, the Dell stuff is coming, the, uh, uh, and that growing in popularity, and, and uh, uh, it's been pretty cool in that regard. But yeah, we're mixed all over the place. We've got uh, Windows, we've got Linux, we've got AIX, we've got uh, uh, well, and the storage side, we've also got uh, tier one stuff with Hitachi as well. So yeah, we're all over the so place. So what do you make of, of the messaging that we're hearing from Dell today? Basically, which essentially, if I could boil it down, is mm -hmm. legacy bad, <laughs> yeah. Dell new and good. <coughs> Okay, and it's well, that's, that's, the that's, the that's traditional the vendor the, right, okay. message. So, yeah. But legacy is a euphemism for that old Clarion stuff that we used mm -hmm. to sell. And of yeah. course, you know, giant you know, monolithic. Yeah. Right, giant monolithic, inflexible, expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, you got you know EMC doing things like coming out with VNXE targeted toward mm -hmm. generalists. And so, uh, my observation is that you know, technologies sort of proceed at a similar po pace. And and you know the vendors out there, they're all well funded. They're, they they all do a good job. They've all basically got you know, very similar mm -hmm. technologies. Uh, what, what differentiates them in your mind? Uh, well, Dell, the whole no forklift upgrade thing is a, a big differentiator for me for Dell. Uh, the idea that uh, the first compellent arrays, or first rather Equalogic arrays that are out there are compatible with all the new stuff, that's really cool, you know? Because, you know, an array might have uh, a five-year lifespan, the warranty on it, the hardware warranty is five years or whatever, but you can just plop another one in next to it, let it migrate everything. This is the same thing I do with virtualization. You know, I plop a new server in there, let the cluster figure itself out, and then I just uh, decommission an old one, you know, and it's pretty seamless. The uh, Doing that same thing with storage is really nice. The auto-tiering stuff that they've got going on, uh, that's that's a, a key thing to manage performance, but also to save money. You know, these uh, traditional, if you will, the legacy vendors uh, will just take SSDs and just sort of tack them on the top of everything and charge you a whole bunch of money for it. You know, but what if we could be intelligent about what we're storing there? And uh, it's hard to tell. You know, I might know that, uh, you know, I've got a, a database that's one terabyte in size, but only a little part of that is probably hot. You know, I don't want to buy a terabyte of SSD and pay all the licensing and all the costs for that when I can just buy, you know, 100 gigs of SSD and just put the, the stuff that really needs that performance right on there. And so, you know, the compellence block level tiering and things like that, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so, I mean, you mentioned you know, sort of what I would call future-proofing, right? I, I yeah. can no forklift upgrades. That, that is a differentiator, I think. It may not be unique to Dell, but it's certainly mm -hmm. unique <coughs> relative to many storage vendors. I mean, everybody's got tiering, everybody's doing something with SSD. Are, are, you, are you saying that there's unique value that Dell is bringing to your organization in those areas, for example? Yeah, just the, the way they're approaching the whole thing, the attitude that they have towards it, you know, uh, you're right, they're not the first people to have SSD, they're not the first people to do auto tiering and that, but I think there's... Actually, uh, Compellent was the first, right? Oh, yeah, <laughs> I guess, you know, my bad. I mean, other than I'd be a mainframe, but yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> there's mainframers, they're <laughs> smug. Here's a quarter, go buy a real OS. Oh, Phil Soren's an old mainframer, come yeah, on. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, um, but uh, being, being able to sit back a little bit uh, and look at the way other vendors are doing things and uh, do them in a way that uh, that's more elegant, if you will. I think that's the word I'm looking for. Um, I was just in a conversation about uh, some of the kludgy natures of of uh, the new technology, new, how SSD is being bolted onto things, mm -hmm. and that. And it seems like Dell is always searching for a more elegant solution uh, and uh, where things just sort of work right. Defined by its simplicity. Uh, simplicity, um, and they really treat staff time as a prized resource, you know, trying to make things 
easy for easy for customers, uh, the people that um, the people that are working on these things. You know, what if I could? What if I didn't have to hire a new storage admin to run all this new storage? What if I could actually get a whole bunch of my storage admins' time back to do more important things? What if you could automate a lot of the the scut work, if you will, you know, of doing all this uh, storage administration and uh, so that the storage guys could actually spend their time on more interesting problems. Do you feel yeah. like some companies, some vendors purposefully keep things complicated so they can sell more services? Is that his, something that historical? I mean, uh, obviously that can't continue indefinitely, but do you feel like that was a strategy of some suppliers? Uh, never, what's the quote, never, uh, never ascribe to malice what can be explained by stupidity or something <laughs> like that. I don't, th I don't think it's intentional. Yeah. I don't think it's intentional. Uh, but there was an it might, it, might have, it might have been. But there was a disincentive to simplify is, is really the, yeah, the point. You so know, maybe it's like not Machiavellian, but maybe it's, hey, we're making a no, lot of money and making a lot of money let's, let's solve some other problems first. You know, where you've got not to, it, engineers are wonderful at solving problems. They're not so great at people stuff. You know, typically, you know, I'm just, I'm generalizing here. There's a lot of great people-oriented engineers. But when it comes to user interfaces and stuff like that to make my life easier, the uh, um, the work that Dell is doing, the work, you know, we, people talk about in Apple and easy to use and that, you know, Dell is doing some of that same work, thinking about, you know, how, how do we preserve the time of the people that are working on it? How do we make it less error prone? How, how do we build better interfaces that are more helpful to the people that are working on these things? That sort of thing. And that's the attitude I really like, you know, and that you don't see everywhere. Yeah, I'm pushing because you are a mixed shop and um, you know, a lot mm -hmm. of times we'll get a customer on and they'll be, you know, vendor A shop, and that's all they know, and they love it. Okay, okay that's cool. Yeah. But you've got experience with a lot of different. What about services? Um, how important are services to you as a as a buyer, and and what do you look for in services? Services like uh, professional from partners, services, professional yeah. services. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm in an organization that's fairly unique. We've got some really really highly technical folks. We don't rely on services all that much. Uh, we like because we figure that we're going to be the guys day in day out, 3 a.m responding to emergencies, hopefully there are none. Uh, but uh, we're going to be the guys that, that get the call at 3 a.m., not, not a professional services guy that went home at 5, that sort of thing. And so we really take it upon ourselves to know the technology very well, get really deep into it, you know, and become experts at it. And in fact, that's one of the reasons I started blogging was to share a lot of that, the stuff that I, w I was finding on that path, and probably also to complain about it too, like most bloggers do. But the uh, it's uh, cathartic. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it's dangerous too. You need to really watch what you're saying. Sometimes uh, keep it positive. Well. But the uh, <laughs> um, the so yeah, from my point of view, professional services are nice upfront as a knowledge transfer. But beyond that, uh, my my folks and and I we tend to just get into it ourselves. So I had two two last questions. First one for me is uh, what's the what's the one thing that drives you crazy that vendors do that that you would tell them just stop doing that. Yeah, yeah Bob, if I you know, I was reading your blog, uh, some of your recent updates, and you g use the phrases we can all stop using. So if oh, yes. marketing people, if there's like one or two things that they could just shut up about or you know give you the truth on, what would it be? Um, everyone always that's a hard question, uh, and it's. Loaded, thank you. The, uh, uh, <laughs> but, you know, more transparency is always nice. You know, there's this fine line for marketing people, especially, between telling people what they need to know and tipping their hand to the competition and stuff like that. So I'm always in favor of more transparency, more information, because uh, that's the kind of guy I am. I want to know dates, I want to know speeds, I want to know capacities, I want to know all that stuff. And, uh, um, so not having that, announcements, especially announcements that have vague release dates, those drive me nuts. Fall, you know, yeah. not to pick on Dell, but uh, some of the recent announcements are, um, have been in the fall. You know, when is that? All companies do that though, yeah. you know, and uh, um, quarter three, and then they clarify quarter three. Well, okay. Is that fiscal you know? year, calendar year, sorted yeah, out, slide you know, a little like bit. Yeah. So, so, so I know Dave's got one question, but before he does, uh, you know, hot, hot topic that I, I know we've been at least talking about on the blogosphere and Twitter and everything, SDN, you know, what's your take on it? Uh, it's the future of 
networking and the uh, uh, taking a lot of the logic, basically making the, the switches themselves sort of dumb and taking a lot of the logic back out to a central place. Uh, there's a lot of powerful stuff you can do with that. Uh, and uh, um, I think it's, it's so early, it remains to be seen exactly how it'll be used. Uh, Indiana University is doing a lot of cool work with that. Uh, their labs there and uh, the uh, uh, converting their campus over to using OpenFlow. And uh, it'll be interesting to see the lessons that they learn there. Everyone's looking at it. My network guys are really looking at it too. We've got some small deployments of it, nothing serious. Uh, but, um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It, seeing it in the university, seeing the service providers mm -hmm. talking about it, I, I think the advice to customers be it'll be ready by the fall of some year upcoming. Yeah, it'll be ready in, in the fall. You know, just don't say a year, you know. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and, uh, in fact, that's one of our jokes at work is, uh, yeah, what year are you talking about? But, I mean, know? how do you freeze the market if you have to be that specific, Bob? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, come yeah. on. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> all right, Bob Plankers, really appreciate you so coming on the queue. Thank you, Dave. He's thank at you, Plankers. Thanks, Follow him on Twitter and uh, keep it right there. We'll be right back with SiliconAngle.tv's continuous coverage live from Dell Storage Forum in Boston.